Hi, welcome to Hope in the Light of Suicide. I'm Tammy White. I'm the founder of the Bobby White Foundation. I'm your host, along with my special co-host. And I am Bobby Snyder, your co-host. <laughs> so, um, before we get started, I, w I want to, again, thank um, WeBeam TV for allowing us to do this. Today is kind of a, today's a special show. And um, if it wasn't for their support, we probably wouldn't be here. And um, it's very special and means a lot to us. And other ways that you can support our show is <clears throat> through our kindness website. There's many different levels um, that you can help support um, the work that we're doing. And Greg Schindler's State Farm Office told me today that they're going to continue their fundraiser. Oh, nice. For throughout this month. So you could call their office and um, just get a quote and just say that... Uh, the Bobby White Foundation, and they'll make a, a donation. So I mentioned that today is um, a special show um, for many reasons. Today is actually, um, if I can get it out, if I can't, um, the fifth anniversary of my husband's death. And we have a special guest. My sister-in-law, Mary Keene, is um, here with us via Zoom. Um, hey, Mayor. So Hi. we want to welcome you, and I'm glad that um, you could be w here with us today. Um, help me get through the show. <laughs> but we're here to celebrate Bobby's life. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it's going to be about. You know, through through these shows, we've um, we tend to acknowledge that um, you know the anniversaries and you know even when we go through holidays that they're difficult for those of us that have been left behind um, you know with our loved ones and yes we've talked a lot about <laughs> you know this show and how coincidentally um, you know this show would fall on um, you know the anniversary of losing Bobby um, so Mary you know as um, you know Tammy's friend I mean <laughs> friends first co-host second um, you know, I, you know, I want to welcome you to um, the show. Um, you know, to celebrate. Um, and Thank you very about, much. Yeah, talk about this special person that was your brother and Tammy's husband, Bobby. Yes. Yeah, this is actually the first time that we've had a sibling sibling on that is a lost survivor. So, um, why don't you tell us from you about Bobby? Um, I think that my brother had a, um, a beautiful spirit. Um, he was curious and very smart and very loving. He loved nature and, uh, the great outdoors. Um, he had a, a very sharp, uh, wit, um, could be very sarcastic, but, uh, he was a character and, um, he definitely uh, marched to his own drummer. That he, picture there that's up right now. I see this, it. This is how part of his humor. He would do almost anything for me. He was actually modeling the first um, one of those hood things that I made for uh, that I crocheted. He, he looks. He looks like he could play a part in Spam a lot. Yeah, um, exactly. Yes. <laughs> but he. No. But he was just okay. I'll do it. Yeah. He was a wonderful um, chef. He loved to cook. Um, he loved the kitties. Uh, yeah, that's him trying to read the Sunday paper. Yeah. <laughs> and he loved his family. He loved his nieces and nephews and uh, loved, loved his wife, Tammy. And um, he, was, uh, he, was a, he was a wonderful big brother. Um, there he is on his 60th That's birthday. His 60th birthday. I can't believe that we were able to pull that surprise off. Yeah, you, it was amazing. I, we were walking down the street trying to hide in the bushes so he wouldn't <laughs> see us. Um, but, yeah, it was a great celebration. And, yeah, there he is um, cooking the with the big bro, big, big yeah, Finn. Um, and he loved to smoke um, and barbecue and cook, and he loved music. Uh, there he is at a, a beautiful. Yeah we, um, went, yeah, we went to. They had a John Lennon exhibit down in Tampa. Museum, yeah. A few years ago when we went. 
That was really. And um, you know, he he was uh, him him and I were. And we do clean up really well. See. Yes, handsome fella. That handsome was... fella. Everybody said he looked like Chris Christopherson or some other celebrity. <laughs> really? um, this picture here was actually from uh, when I my first time I was nominated for Queen Chasco. And yeah. So we had to get all dressed up and. Oh my God, Mary, hearing you say the resemblance to Chris Christopherson, you know, all the while I'm looking at him like, who does he remind me of? There's <laughs> yeah. somebody that he reminds me of, and you just nailed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he was, I think he was striking. Like he, when he walked into a room, he had just these beautiful blue eyes, and oh, people yes. would just go, wow, look at that guy, you know? Yeah, he had the uh, most gorgeous blue he eyes. Had a, he had a charisma about him. I mean, very low key, though. I mean, he wasn't. Uh, flamboyant about anything he was he was a very simple um uh human being uh, he just loved fishing loved the outdoors very much like my dad um and uh he just you know yeah, that's <laughs> typical him <laughs> yeah you know i just um i try to remember him in just positive ways uh you know that helps me to cope they're, the, they're my, my granddaughters um, when they made that beautiful door for the fundraiser for the Bobby White Foundation. This is actually now... Um, we've well, that's the new one. Yeah. yeah, this is the new one. The this, Art for Hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we had it up last year and it didn't. we didn't sell it. So I just this morning created a, an event on the Foundation Facebook page. And mm -hmm. that door is now up for auction. You just go to the Bobby White Foundation Facebook page and find the event. Um, it started at 11 o'clock. It will run through April 29th. And all you have to do in order to participate is for, to put your bid in, is put your bid in the comments below the picture from the event. And it'll, like I said, it'll run through April 29th, which is actually the day that we had his life celebration that year. And um. Um, it's a it's a Bobby loved the Beatles. And that's a beautiful antique door that Michael and Amy, uh, my son and my daughter in law, uh, found at a beautiful um, antique shop. And then they the, the girls put the lyrics to one of Bobby's favorite songs on there. And it's a it's a work of art. I mean, people oh, yeah. can put them up in their homes or businesses um, and they just they really are a showstopper. Um, the business who purchased the first two that um, Haley did is um, displayed in their office. Yes, for, the, for their business. So, and this door actually didn't Michael say that the window actually rolls up and down. I do. Yes, I, I, I do believe agree. that it is a working door. The window will roll up and down. Yeah, yeah. Those are our our great nieces. They're so beautiful and talented. And the girls, um, you know, they they are beautiful artists, both of them. And uh, and they just you know are, are just so grateful to be a part of celebrating um, the foundation and and helping others um, as they face uh, these types of crises in their life you know so to to prevent um, suicide and to help the families you know I'm so we as collectively as a family are very proud of Tammy and all of her efforts to develop and create um, the Bobby White Foundation and to provide the community services um, through community agencies, police, firefighters, um, hospitals, doctors, et cetera, to, to fill the void that was in our community when she was faced with this five years ago. She took her pain and put it into uh, good works. And we are so proud of her and her efforts and her, her diligence, uh, her intellect to find all the different avenues to develop and create this foundation and, you know, to help others. We are just, words cannot express how proud we are of her. Thanks. You know, Mary, if I can echo... Um my relationship with Tammy started at a work function and um, you know, I just remember watching, you know, listening to her talk about the purple folder 
And I walked up to her, you know, and, you know, I had a short conversation with her because that was right after I had lost my grandson, you know, to a suicide. Um, he was 14. And, um, you know, at that time, you know, as we were talking, I was like, yeah, I want to get involved with what you're doing. And at the time, Tammy was like, it's, it's, it's too soon. And I remember looking at him like, who are you to tell me it's too soon? You know, kind of like, not, you know, like verbalized. And I was like, she said it was too soon. Like, what did she mean by that? Um, we stayed, we stayed connected. And, you know, through that, you know, I don't want to say a ch you know, chance meeting. Um, I mean, I had to be there. It was work. <laughs> but through that. You were just friends that hadn't met yet. Exactly. And, you know, to have that meeting at a work setting morph into, you know, the close friendship that we share now, um, you know, and, you know, to allow us, you know, to have this platform, you know, of course, we, we um, as Tammy said at the beginning of the show, um, you know, we thank, you know, John and, and his crew here at WeBeam TV, you know, to allow us to have this platform. Um, but if I may ask Mary, um, you know, Tammy um, shared um, you know, and for, you know, the people who tune in to us um, in every episode, this is the first time that we have had a sibling of someone lost to suicide um, as a guest. Um, can you share with, you know, our viewers um, what you went through, what your feelings, what your emotions, what your thoughts were when you got that call that said, Mary, Bobby's gone? Um, total despair. I was at work. Um, I'm a school teacher. I'm a retired school teacher now, but, um, on this day, which was a Friday of, uh, 2016, um, I can remember where I was like it was, uh, frozen in time. I got a phone call and I just, you know, I think when, it, when I first heard it, I just, I just, I'm a person of faith, um, deep Catholic faith. And, uh, I, I just knew that he was in God's hands, you know, but then I, I just, my brain just went automatically to Tammy, you know, like, what can we do to help? And it, you know, after the initial shock, it's just such a void in your family. It's, it's, um, it's like a hole in your heart. Like you just, uh, you know, you just think, okay, well, this isn't real. This isn't happening. You know, it's, it's hard for your, your brain to wrap itself around it. Um, but then, you know, we had to help and just be there for Tammy because she, our hearts were just broken for her, you know? Um, and that, you know, in the five years that have transpired, we've gone, I, I try to, my ability to cope is to to know that he's with my parents up in heaven and that he is out of pain and because I know that he was every inch of his body from the tip of his head to the tip of his toe was in pain um, through his with his addiction and his um, uh, you know just Damn this ass. terrible terrible um, from the multiple sclerosis yeah I mean he had faced MS for many, almost 20 years, right, Tam? It was just over 25 years. He was a, he was a, can, a colon cancer survivor. Um, and I do believe that he was starting to um, uh, get physically ill from the MS, which I think perpetuated uh, this event to happen. So um, it is. It's, it's, it's my brother and sister, my older brother and sister have a lot of trouble coping with um the loss of our brother um and i seem to be the one that i want i want to be of help with tammy i want to try to help others who are going through it and um and just i mean tammy has such perseverance such um she is honoring um my brother um and in her, like I said, in her pain and grief, she is turning it into something positive out in the world. And she's helping people to prevent it from happening and to be able to cope with it if it does. And she's she's doing God's work. 
So I am just like, you know, I, I've tried to be of support to her, um, and I hope that she feels that. She feels my love and, and um, you know, the support that I try to give her. And I, I have been blessed enough to be able to, to uh, participate in, in giving out some of the purple folders to people in the community. And it's helped them a great deal. So, um, but as a sibling, it is, it is, it's, you feel like a part of you is missing. And, you know, and I, I tend to go back to, you know, childhood memories and looking, looking at pictures and reminiscing. And we, you know, we talk about him, we talk about him and we, we remember him and we try to focus on the happy times. And, and, uh, like I said, I, I just, uh, I, it's a very strange place to walk. You know, and I can tell you, um, just from my own experience, um, that, yes, Tammy loves you very much, and she <laughs> feels it. Um, you know, so for, you know, for me personally, um, I'm blessed to finally be able to put a face to a name, because um, I hear about you all the time. You know, she talks about you all the time. Well, I look like Bobby a lot, too. Yes, you do. Yes, you and do. I, and I think that, I hope that that, comforts her <laughs> and, 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 doesn't, and doesn't upset her <laughs> because I, I'm very different from my brother. Like I, you know, I was just like a very conservative, you know? Yeah. Your yeah, personalities are, are a lot different. <laughs> and, um, and Bobby was a free spirit, you know, he, uh, you know, we just, but I, but I definitely uh, accepted him for, all of that, all the beauty and all the complexity. Um, but uh, we were very different in in some ways, and and yet we still had that beautiful connection as as a sibling. You know, yeah. he, he he knew that when he needed a good swift kick in the butt, <laughs> I was the person to come to. If so, could, yeah. If we could unpack some of what you said as you were describing your relationship with. Um, uh, you know, with Bobby and um, what you were experiencing and hearing, you know, getting that phone call that said he's gone. I um, mean, as you're telling me, I, I'm, a, I'm a school teacher. I was in school. And I'm feeling you when I got the phone call about Aiden, my grandson. Um, I work in the schools. And, you know, like you, I was in school when I got that phone call. Um, so I can only imagine. But I, I want to um, do a little piece and parcel with you, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. you know, as it relates to some of the things that you said, like, let's uh, focus a minute on, on uh, the coping and how are you coping with, you know, with Bobby's loss. Um, one of the things I heard you say was, um, I'm a deep person of faith and I um, find comfort, and I'm, paraphr I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, I find comfort in the fact that he's with my mom and dad in heaven. A couple of weeks ago, Tammy and I had um, a faith-based leader, um, you know, on the show, you know, to talk about how some people's um, belief that when a person dies by suicide, you know, they're condemned and they're not going to heaven. How do you, as a, you know, as from what I'm understanding, a person of faith, um, handle when people tell you, well, he's not in heaven, you know, he died. I've never had anybody ever say that to me. And um, I know better because God is a loving and forgiving God. He knew that Bobby was hurting and, and um, he accepted him with open arms when he, when he went to heaven. I don't, I think that the other um, connotation is maybe from old school, like, you know, fire and brimstone uh, of, of decades ago. But today, you know, God is a loving God, is a forgiving God. And, um, I've never had anybody but uh, give me support and compassion and understanding um, because, as you know, this particular phenomenon affects all walks of life across the globe. So, it, and it's been, you know, it's, not, it's everyone I think can relate to it either with a, somebody that they know or, uh, you know, someone in their community. I mean, this is just something mental health issues have to be addressed. And, um, and I think that when somebody gets to a part of that, their lives where they're so despondent and they don't think that there's any other way out, um, they have to have a plan B.
They have to have people they can reach out to to get the help that they need so that they can, you know, um, get through uh, the crisis they're in. And, and for those who are, you know, the families that are survivors, they also need help. You know, I've, I've gone to some meetings with um, uh, Tammy and I've seen the pain that people go through and, and the terrible challenges that they have to face. And we can do it if we do it together. You know, you have to reach out to professionals and people that can help you through it. And, um, but as far as my, my faith, I miss him. I miss my brother, but I know where he is. And that's how, that's how I come to, um, you know, accept it. And other times I'll say, I'm sure Tammy experiences it as you do too, Bonnie, that you just like, oh, this, this wait. Did this really happen? Like, you know, I, I try to envision him like like he's on a he's on a trip, like he's on a voyage, and I and he's okay, and he's not in pain, and he's with people that love him. And someday I'll see him. I'll see him one day when my when my time comes. So that's how I I I can wrap my head head around it. But my my older brother and my my older sister, they, I think to this day, Tammy will agree with me that. They have not done as well. Yeah, I was going to It's it, that, very, yeah. Sometimes it's avoid. you know, they talk about him in positive ways, but they can't talk about the reality of what happened or how that's affected them. They, they, they try to just kind of redirect conversations. So, and, and that's an inability to cope. And, and within that realm, I... I don't hardly ever see him unless it's once a year at a family event or something. Yeah, it's it's really I think it's, hard, it's just it's hard for it's them. hard for them to to um to to deal with it. It really is. There's I think there's there's all a, a whole um myriad of emotions. I I won't I won't be the one to even predict of what all those are because they won't even share them with me. Um at times, but and sometimes I, I feel because of the way things have been, you know, the last several years with the two of them, that it's harder. It's hard for them to be around me. It's painful. I think it's it's painful because they they it makes it a reality to them. Right. You know, but. I, I find that when I'm with you, I feel at peace because I do feel that he's with me and I feel that he's with with us when we're together, when we talk. Well, and, that, and that's the different ways that it's how all three of you cope differently. Yes. Yes. Be, uh, you know, I don't know. See, one of the things I would see my brother, I wouldn't see my brother all the time. Uh, because I lived a busy life, you know, I was working full time. I had three kids. I had grandkids. I was running around all the time. So I didn't see him like on a weekly basis or like, you know, even a monthly basis sometimes. But he always knew that I loved him and I and I was always there for him. So I, you know, I was not on bad terms with Bobby. I was the I was kind of like the peacemaker, the you know the the intermediary. Yeah, actually, you were. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I think because I know that I was at peace with him, and he and he knew that I loved him, that helped me to cope as well. There wasn't like a, um, any turbulence at you know at that time between us, so that helps me to cope too. And, you know, you did hit on some, you know, key components, you know, speaking my language, you know, as a, I'm a mental health professional, you know, and so I'm listening to you speaking my language and I was like, yeah, you know, she's, she's, she's nailing it. Um, you know, I was particularly struck by, you know, something you said where um, you envision that Bobby's on a trip. And that makes me think of my granddaughter, um, you know, Aiden's, Aiden's, you know, older, you know, one of Aiden's older sisters. Um, and that's her way of coping with, you know, her brother being gone. You know, she tells herself um, Aiden is in Florida with Nana. 
um, and maybe he'll come home. At the same time, she also, you know, has wrangled with, you know, the anger and, you know, the other emotional yeah. um, components mm-hmm. that come along with you know, that's, that. That's one of the things I, I, I wasn't, I, I, I was angry at him for what he was doing to Tammy. That, that, that's the only uh, manifestation of anger. I wasn't really mad at him because I know that he wasn't in his right mind when it happened. But I was like angry of what he didn't, he didn't realize the ripple effects of how it was going to f- affect all of us, especially Tammy, and you because know, she was always, always his number one cheerleader, right. you know? I, I see that. And, and I could, I, I see that in her, um, you know, the, the other key component that you hit on is the fact that everyone deals with this in their own different ways. Um, that, that, um, you know, Tammy and I, um, in the past weeks, you know, we talked about the, um, law survivor bills of rights and highlighted how, you know, this journey is different for everyone. And then there are some cases where the journey might be exactly the same, you know, where, you know, if I personalize it for a second, I processed my grandson's death, um, a little differently than, you know, how I six months later processed my, my, my youngest son, not my grandson's dad, mind you, my grandson, uh, his father's my oldest son, um, making this phone call six months later and saying, son, I need you to come to Florida now. Your little brother is gone. Um, and watching, you know, our family dynamic, you know, processing those two deaths. Um, you know, so I, you know, I appreciate you, um, you know, pointing out that that grief cycle is different um, for, for everybody, um, you know, along with um, deflection. You know, how do we, um, you know, if we're not in a place to accept the reality uh, that that person is no longer with us, yeah. um, what are because, those self- You know, the, sa- the waves of sadness do, do run over us at times. Sometimes, um, you know, a memory or a picture or an event will just kind of flood flood you know us and with emotion and we'll feel just a sadness like oh he would have loved that or you know we just i think that that's going to be something that will probably stick with all of us for the rest of our lives you know the what ifs or you know but again it it really comes down to just taking time to heal and like you said at all different rates for different people um but I, I do know that he's at peace, and that's how I that's how I can cope. Do you? Think- and I know it's it, it's hard because I see how Tammy sometimes you know is experiencing things, and I and I want to so much, you know, to take that pain away from her, but I can't. You know, do you? I can try to help alleviate uh, relieve it a little bit, but. She's she's again putting her energies into making things better for the greater good, and I hope that that's helping. And I know that that's helping her a great deal. Mary, do you ever feel any regrets? You know, it's like you're as you're on this journey. Um, do you have you experienced, or do you, um, you know, feel yourself sometimes in your mind saying, "I regret," or if only, you know, because we talk about you know in our line of work. Um, not to engage in the coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Um, at the same time, we know that those are real and they do manifest. Um, can you talk to us a little bit a- about any coulda, shoulda, woulda regrets that you may have, if you've had any? Um, I think that my regret, obviously, is that we couldn't we couldn't stop it from happening. Um, I know that my brother for decades had said on occasion uh, when he was he had overindulged in, in different things, he would say things um, that I wouldn't say. That, well, obviously, they were a bit, in retrospect, suicidal thoughts like, oh, I'm not going to I'm not going to grow old or I'm not going to do like and we didn't really take it. Uh, seriously like anything that would happen um but i do regret that i i 
I couldn't reach out and help him um, when he was suffering and that I could, maybe I could have made things better for him. That, that's what I regret, that I wasn't, I wasn't able to help him when he needed it. But, you know, Mary, he wasn't letting us know. Yeah. You know, he, he wasn't letting us know. You know, and to that point, I wonder, you know, how much of it for the both of you, when you hear him say, I'm not going to make it to an old age, was your brain, you know, I, I'm going to presume that your brain was not processing because he no. was going to die by suicide. It is, I have MS, you know, and right. I'm not going to make it to, um, you know, so I would say it's not so much dismissing, you know, I guess when I'm hearing that, you know, I wonder how much of it is, oh, well, okay, and, and, that's reality and acceptance. Yeah, and I think it was last week when we were on the show that um, now my brain is just <laughs> going to mush. Um, he would, I, I always assumed that he was going to die from complications from his MS. You know, after over 25 years of it and and we were super lucky to have him those 25 years because mm -hmm. when he was first diagnosed we had no idea what our journey was going to be like um we left fort lauderdale to move up here to be near family and you know fortunately we did have those 25 years and in that sense as time went on he would often comment especially the closer he was getting to retirement age that I, I'm never going to see my Social Security. But I never would have equated suicide with him not reaching Social Security age. Yeah. And I actually, and I was at a Rotary meeting and an attorney, I was a speaker, and one of our attorneys asked me, you know, in retrospect, is there anything that you may have you know, something that happened that now this is what it looks like. And that's what I told him. I said, yeah. I said, he would often comment that he he wasn't ever going to get his Social Security. And on a couple occasions comment that it was for me. And, but again, not not ever thinking that it was because he was... Yeah, he didn't want to be a burden on you, Tammy. No, I know he didn't. and And he... Take your time. It's okay, sweetheart. He did tell me that several times. And I do think that as, um, you know, around 19, 2016, I do believe that Bobby was suffering uh, some more physical um, uh, symptoms, and he just was keeping it from you. Um, I do believe, I think that his vision was starting to be impaired, and his ability, his muscle weaknesses, and and I think that the the disease was progressing. Well, and he had had that really really bad exacerbation the fall prior to him taking his life. Yes. And it did t it took him longer to bounce back from that. And yeah. in retrospect, I think that he really didn't bounce back as much as he was leading everybody to believe. Mm -hmm. you know, that he was. Yeah. And I think that's hard for people who are, you know, dealing with, you know, whether it is a, you know, an illness, whether it is a physical or a, you know, mental health illness. I don't want to be a burden. I don't, you know, as, you know, we shared with Patrick, mm -hmm. I, I'm tired of feeling like I feel. Um, and, you know, um, what... Uh, you know, I don't want people to worry about me, so let me take the weight off of everybody by doing this. You know, and, you know, we teach, um, you know, people who are dealing with someone who is potentially suicidal. Is, you know, one thing we don't say to them, think about the people that you're going to leave behind. You know, because, you know, to a large degree. That adds another burden well, not to only, them. Well, not only that, <laughs> but it is I am thinking about the people I'm going to leave behind right. because my being here 
is more of a burden than my not being here. So I'm doing this so they yeah, but they're they're seeing the repercussions in a whole different lens. Exactly, exactly. And, and I don't and think people do. I don't think people look at it that in that context. Um, most people right. when they say think about the people that you leave behind, it is more the intention is more let me inflict guilt and shame, you know, and you know like guilt you into not doing it when the approach should be um we don't feel burdened you know we don't you know you're not a burden to us you know yes this is a challenge and there's a difference between a challenge and a burden well and with us um and and it started many many years ago because uh, bobby had been diagnosed with ms prior to us even getting married and i remember years ago uh, my mother-in-law um Mary, who is also Mary, we have like a million Marys in our family. <laughs> <laughs> she would go to, um, her and I would go to the um, support groups for people that ha had MS. And typically, you know, it was the people that had MS that were there. And I remember so many times, and even, even your mother even said to me, why are you marrying him? Think about he it. He has, yeah. you know, he has MS. And, and the people at the support group, they thought I was absolutely out of my mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, he had, I think he had been diagnosed probably like two and a half years or so before we got married. Mm -hmm. You know, they think and perhaps I perhaps you had a martyr complex or something. No, like I don't that. I don't know. And it's just like and I remember standing at the kitchen sink at mom and dad's house with your mother and her saying that to me and I was just like I, I think that I don't think she said that you were crazy, but she no, said, she, "Do you know what you're getting yourself she's into?" Like, she's like, "Why, why are you doing this?" And I, and I just, of course, you have to know my mother-in-law. She was a typical New York woman, <laughs> and she, I just, and, and sometimes she come would come off, you know, the way she said things, and I, I just remember turning and looking at her. She was direct, but she was oh, loving. Yeah, she, oh, she was very <laughs> loving, but oh yeah, some of the things. So, but I just remember turning at her and looking at her because, number one, I really have never had anybody talk like that. You know, I never, first New Yorkers I ever met was this family. And I remember the first day sitting down with them and I was scared. I mean, I just remember, <laughs> I just remember looking up and everybody was talking and talking all over everybody. and. But anyway, so I just turned to her and I said, because I love him. What? I'm not marrying MS. I'm marrying Bobby. Yeah. And it, and it just, I mean, I just, I was like, that's really kind of a weird thing to say to me, you know? And we, well, she we you know, Tammy proved how strong um, fortitude, uh, loyalty, um, she was always, a, she was, she was the reason Bobby survived it. You know, Mary, I'm gonna I, I'm I'm gonna echo that one. There's a lot of dynamite in this tiny little package. <laughs> you know, a lot of dynamite. So you're from New York, I understand. I'm a, I'm gonna veer off for a second. You're from New York originally. Yes, born and raised. Yeah. So I I'm, I just have to share with this. It's an aside for a second. I'm from New Jersey. You do know we own the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> so on the New Jersey side. That's right. <laughs> I forgot. I would throw that a little a, a little you know humor in there. Okay, Mary, let me add, let me go back to a minute, um, you know, uh, your relationship with Bobby. So I understand you're a younger sister. I'm the baby, yeah. You're the baby, okay. So can you share with us, um, you know, as we're talking and celebrating, um, you know, this wonderful life that was Bobby White. And, um, you know, I got to say. He was so handy. We miss him. Well, can, you, can you share with us one of the, um, you know, how little, you know, older siblings tend to play, play pranks and whatnot on younger siblings? Oh, he tortured me. So can yeah. you share one of, like, one of your most favorite memories of how your big brother would torture his baby sister? Okay, so picture this. Um, I, I'm going to venture to say I was probably around three or four years old. And my older brother, Jay, and Bobby, um, they were running around uh, the yard with my sister and I. And they basically took me 
um, and tied me with a rope on the tree and um, shot me with darts, okay? Like suction darts. And um, so I just remember them torturing me and doing a lot of screaming and calling out for my mom, Ma, come, you know, uh, rescue me. Uh, but that's, yeah, they, they tortured me all the time. They teased me. They just, you know, it was just part of the territory. <laughs> Bobby always blamed his rotor cuff uh, problems on you. <laughs> oh, uh, why is that? I don't, something about... You guys got into a fight as teenagers and... Oh, he picked me up and dropped banister. me. There was something with the banister. <laughs> yeah, I think he picked me up and I fell and then I may believe like I was unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was, yeah, he, he did. He tortured me. But he was like five years older than me. Um, so he was like out of the house. You know, as soon as he got out of high school, he went on, he, he was like a, he went through... A very preppy stage, and then by the time he was a senior in high school, he was a hippie in 1970, uh, 1971. And he hitchhiked across the country. So, you know, from the time he was 18, I was only like 13, um, he was out of the house, you know. So, um, but, uh, you know, he, he wanted to experience different things and, uh, you know, finally made his way back to the family. But... Uh, he was he had a wayward spirit sometimes. <laughs> What's your favorite memory? Uh, favorite memory. Um, I just uh, I I loved his laugh. Um, uh, you know, I just remember happy times in their house. You know, cooking and having barbecues and singing and just you know, um, him rolling his eyes because sometimes he thought like us as a family we we were a little over the top. You know. But uh, I definitely just rem I remember his smile and, you know, just he had a good heart. He was, you know, he, he always wanted to, to um, do the right thing. And, and he took a lot of pride in his work. He, he had a great work ethic. He was a, he was a master surveyor. And he took, uh, he took his work very seriously. And you know, no matter what he did, he always tried to always do his best. And that's how... That was ingrained in us from our parents, you know, to just, um, you know, make a difference, be a light in the, in the world. And uh, so underneath it all, he really had a heart of gold. Mary, if you could say anything, let's just say right now we have a direct line, your mouth to Bobby's ears. What, oh. what would you say to him right now? I love you and I miss you. And um, just, I just wish him peace, you know. I, I, I'm not going to, I don't feel angry. Like, I, yeah, I could say, oh, I'm, I'm mad that you're gone and all that. But it, it's not going to bring him back. So what I do have, I hold very dear and, and I cherish those memories. They're very close to my heart with him. I, I, I try to. Just remember him smiling and going fishing and being handy. You know, he was always tinkering, doing things just like Tammy. Tammy's another one. She's like multifaceted. She's got so many talents. Um, but I, I just, I do remember that he had a great love. He, you know, he, he loved my mom. And I think when my mom passed in 2010, that was a big, a big crush to his heart. Yeah, he and I don't think that we really realized how how deeply he, he I think he felt regret um you know yeah when mom passed things away things in his life and he really missed my mom and when both my parents were both gone you know that was just like crushing to him you know it was there was a, there was a a change in him when mom passed away yeah there was a definite change in him and um and I think that the reality of our mortality, you know, became very uh, real for him. You know, life is fleeting and uh, you got, you know, it's temporal. So I think that it just gave him a lot of food for thought. Too much. 
And, you know, when he was around me, he kind of put on a mask. Like, he was always, he, he tried to be happy. And, you know, like, he didn't really, um, he, he didn't want to burden me with anything that was, like, he was struggling with. Because, uh, you know, the times that we were together, we, we tried to make the best of it. We tried to, like, you know, just celebrate the the good things in life, you know, and not think about all the struggles that we were all having. So, but I, I, I would definitely tell him that I love him and I miss him and that I hold him very precious, you know, in my heart. What would you say, because um, as you know, you know, the, the um, title of our show is Hope, you know, then mm -hmm. we have that in the light of suicide. I want to focus on the hope um, part of, you know, our, our show's title. Um, as a sibling who has, you know, obviously, you know, dealing with, you know, the loss of, in this case, an older sibling, what words of hope or wisdom or, you know, however you want to package it, would you give to other siblings, you know, who, like you, are struggling with the loss of you know, a sibling that they were close to, that they loved, and, um, you know, not so much you, you know, your journey is exactly as mine, um, but as support. What would you say in support of other siblings? You're not alone. You're not alone, and there's help out there to help you to, um, to survive this tragedy. And Tammy is making that a reality for our community. She, her, you know, it's not just lip service with her. She's put in the work. She continues to put in the work and to outreach and to, to reach out to anyone who can benefit from her knowledge and her, uh, the connections and the, you know, all of the um, technological uh materials and things available that people can tap into as a resource to help them to cope. There is hope. You are not alone. And you are loved and there are people that understand and have compassion for what you're going through. So hang in there. And, and again, taking, what, taking this experience and making something good for others uh, is it's the only way to make sense of it. It's when you can when you can help somebody else through it. And I my I salute her. I I I respect and admire what she has done uh, for the community and what she continues to do for our family. She's very strong, stronger than she'll ever know. I I agree with you there. Um, you know, as we we move into um, you know the last segment, you know of of the show, um, you know, and you um, you know talk about you know Tammy's resilience and you know like I said she's feisty, she's feisty. I you know I, you're her sister-in-law, so I mean I, I might, a little Spitfire. <laughs> exactly. I, you know I might compete with you about in terms of love. I, I'm, I'll concede. I'll, I'll 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 give it to you, your family. She's only uh, known me longer too. <laughs> but yeah, you've known her uh, only because you've known her longer. I mean, I'll just I'll just go there. But yeah, you're right. The, um, you know, and I think that's a really um, nice segue into you know, Mary. Th you know, thank you so much for sharing, um, you know, your story and your journey with Bobby. Not that we're saying we want you to go away. Do not log yeah, off. Yeah, don't go. Don't Do go not anywhere. Log yet. Off. Stay. Right. You know, stay right there. Um, but that is a well. I I didn't know what today was going to really be about. Um, I didn't know. I, I'm hopeful that I um, have reiterated the importance of the Bobby White Foundation and the Purple Folder campaign and to let the community know that it is a lifesaver in more ways than one. And, um, and I, as I said, I respect and admire everything that uh, Tammy Hope White is doing uh, for for our community and for our name. world. Uh, Thank you. We, uh, as a matter of fact, and, and I want to hit on something that 
you know, you mentioned about Bobby being a hippie. We had um, a volunteer come and help me uh, put assemble folders on Tuesday. And she told me she was trying to describe Bobby and I to her brother. And she just like, kind of looked and she goes, well, the only way that I could really do it is they were the ultimate hippie. <laughs> It's just, it's he was. Fun. He was a nature lover, you know, oh, peace, okay. love. Uh, um, there was nothing pre pretentious about him. Um, you know, he was just a good average guy um, making his way. And uh, but yeah, he he uh, he loved the music and partying and having a good time and um, and he loved you, Tam. You know, one thing, Mary, about our show is nothing about it is scripted. Like we Never. do not, yeah, like we, and that's great. We do not, <laughs> like it, you know, we may have a an agenda. This is what we're going to talk about today. And sometimes, you know, we're on point. There are other times where it's like, you know, we didn't get the wait. We, we, we ran out today. Oh, but we, let's let's go back to the purple but, folder because we have talked about that a little bit. Um, and actually, I got a phone call yesterday afternoon um, from a gal in my Rotary Club. And uh, a, a woman that she knows in her uh, Bible study group just within the last couple of days lost her niece to suicide. And it was a drug overdose. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to come over and pick up two of the purple folders. Nice. One for her friend and then one for herself because she also, within the last few years, lost her nephew to suicide. So... These are these people are knowing, and and they know when they when they hear of somebody that has lost somebody, people are starting to pick up the phone and call. Them. And five years ago today, you were promised help and support and direction, and you weren't given it. Not at all. And, and you made it a reality. Not at all. You made it. None of us got. None of us got it. I mean, it was. You know, there was no help for any any of our family. And that day, everybody was in our front yard. Everybody everybody came immediately as soon as they heard. And and we weren't, you, I don't know if you remember that sheriff kneeling down in front of me and saying, Yep. I, this is, this is my territory. I, if you ever need me. I'll I'll be here in a second. And, you know, me being of a business person in the community, my first thought is, do you have a card? I need a name and a phone number. And he just looked up at me and pointed to his shirt. No, but this is my name. I don't even know what he looked like. I don't even know his name. It, it's such a trauma when you go through something like this and when the dust settles, you need to be able to say, okay, you know, where's my map? Where am I going to get, get help? How, you know, and Tammy, you, all through that confusion, you, out of that rubble came a light. And you said, okay, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to find out. And you, you did the footwork. You found out every step of the way what you had to do and with every success we applauded you and cheered you on and now you are making great things happen for thousands of lives of people in the area well and i didn't do this alone i've had a lot of help along the way yes and, and i guess you have but you got everything going kiddo and you have loyal friends and and a wonderful co-host there and you're providing a wonderful service to people who need it. Well, and that's one thing, too, that I have mentioned. I'm fortunate because I do have a lot of really wonderful friends and family. And there's a lot of people that are in our position that don't have that support Absolutely. and that need that support. You want to grab that? And, you know, on that, because, you know, we're like at our two-minute mark, um, we just want to take a real quick minute and you know, show our audience um, our T-shirts. Um, this, this is a Tammy vision here. <laughs> um, these uh, shirts are available for purchase um, on the foundation website. Um, so it has, you know, the Hope logo on the front. 
and on yep, the there it is. back, um, it's got a picture of it up right there. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, if you go to um, Bobby can, White Foundation, well, you can go click on, take a picture of that QR code, and it'll take you right to the landing page. And um, you can order them directly for pickup. If you're here local, um, Sunco or Gulfside Custom T-shirts are the ones that are doing these for us, and they're doing a wonderful job. They actually donated 24 T-shirts to the foundation. But and I only have a few of them at the office. But if you want to call the office, I do have some there. They're twenty dollars, or you can um, order them directly from the website, and they'll ship them anywhere. So yeah, and that's another part of our support. You know, Tim yeah, golf side. This um, is absolutely. yeah, golf side T-shirts have been wonderful, and the this is the first. We're going to have more T-shirts to come, but this is the one that we did in honor of our first program, the Purple Folders. You know, and with that, um, you know, again, as we as we ride this out, um, you know, just a reminder that there's always, you know, support out there, whether it's through the foundation, whether it's through NAMI, whether it's through, you know, any of the AFSP. mental health resources. Exactly. Um, you know, please don't hesitate to uh, to reach out, um, you know, and thank you for always, you know, tuning in. Um, again, a shout out to WeBeam TV for allowing us to um, bring this show to you. Mary, we thank you for um, showing on this. Tammy and I say yeah, that last uh, two thank seconds. Thank my sister-in-law for sharing. There's, it means a lot. Yeah, it's an honor and pleasure to honor you, Tammy, and to honor the memory of my brother. Remember, there's Bobby White. Hope.